that he is on. Not just a great song from Glenn Fry, by the way, rest in peace, but you might say these days it's the theme for LSU head coach Ed Argeron, coaching in the pressure cooker known as the Bayou. And you might be thinking, well, how could that be? His first full season at LSU, coach won nine games. Well, nine wins at a lot of programs would be considered acceptable, and probably in Lawrence, Kansas, it'd probably get you a big, fat race. But keep in mind something, though. This is not Lawrence, Kansas. This is Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The bar is set pretty high, and of course, much of that could be attributed to 2001 through 2011. That 11-year stretch, the Tigers won four SEC titles, seven seasons with at least 10 wins, and a pair of national championships. And of course, they got to the national championship game in 2011. But Lately, well, it has not been the same. As a matter of fact, you know, Les Miles, even Les Miles himself, who won a national title, couldn't sustain that high level of excellence demanded and was uh, let go during the 2016 season, allowing Orgeron to take over. Um, I think for Ed Orgeron, you, you look at this particular team he's got and you look at the schedule, and I know that LSU is expecting heaven and earth from him, but really, Tiger fans, think about what you're asking. Um, you lost a lot of players. You only got five starters coming back on both sides of the ball, six underclassmen who declared for the NFL, seven players, by the way, taken in this past draft. And like I said, it's a schedule at the end of the show we're going to dissect. It's very demanding. I think if, they, if Orgeron wins eight or nine games this year, I think that's one hell of a coaching job. I know the expectations are very high, but I think you got to be realistic and for LSU, I mean, the Vegas total this year in their um, column of win total, seven. Okay, seven. And so I, I say give Ed Orgeron a break, unless this team, of course, pulls a five and seven or a six and six, and maybe at that point you have some serious reevaluating to do. Quarterback, well, they're really going to have to evaluate this spot because Danny Etling, um, he's gone now in the NFL. Uh, Miles Brennan played a little bit last year as a freshman, but it's Joe Burrow who I think will get the job. Uh, the graduate transfer uh, from Ohio State, 6'3", 210 pounds, strong arm. Um, I think in the end it's going to be him that gets that starting call. Now, the running game, uh, you didn't just lose Darius Geis, a mega rusher who could break a big one at any time, also in the NFL, and you also lost your second leading rusher in Darrell Williams. This is going to be a major area for the Tigers to find out who can step up. You can go with more of a power type back in Nick Brissett. But also, too, you can mix in the guy with plenty of speed in Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and a four-star recruit in Chris Curry. So, you know, they've got guys who I think will try to step up. But, again, this is a very inexperienced area for the Tigers. Now, receiver, they did lose some talent, but I'm not quite as pessimistic in this area, even though you do lose DJ Chark and Russell Gage to the pros. Jonathan Giles, we're finally going to get to see him as a Tiger. We saw him with the Red Raiders in 2016 with over 1,000 yards receiving. So we finally get to see what he can do. Um, Terrace Marshall, probably the number one recruit in this latest class, five-star recruit. I think he'll not only uh, play, but I think he'll start. And Steven Sullivan didn't play much, but did average 19.9 yards per catch in 2017. And you return the tight end, Foster Moreau had three TDs. Majority of the offensive line does come back a big area of strength, even though I know you lose the center in Will Clapp. He was a good one. But as you can see right there at the bottom of the screen, you do return plenty of experience. And, you know, Ed Ingram, um, this guy started last year as a freshman at the right guard spot. And opposite him on the left side, you have Garrett Brumfield. So offensive line, I think they'll be uh, just fine. The Tigers last year uh, ran quite a bit. In fact, 28th in the country in rushing offense. But there was a bit of a conflict with um, Ed Orgeron, and at that time, Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, they did not see eye-to-eye -eye as Orgeron wanted to throw more, and basically Canada wanted to be a run-heavy type offense for the Tigers, so basically that was it for Canada. He's now at Maryland, so you bring in Steve um, Ensminger, who I think will imply more of the offense that Orgeron wants, which will be more passing than what we saw last year. Well, defensively, Dave Aranda, he did not pass up LSU. He could have. He could have gone to Texas A&M this past season. The Aggies really wanted him, and why not? I mean, the Tigers last year, 18.9 um, points per game is all they gave up, 14th best in college football. And total defense was 17th best, 316 yards per game is all they gave up. And LSU had to pay a pretty big price, though, to keep 
um, Aranda, uh, ten million dollars for four years, two and a half mil per season to keep Aranda put in Baton Rouge. Six players are gone. Those six starters are gone. And you know, again, LSU just has you know so much talent that sometimes doesn't stay the entire four seasons and. And they go into bigger and better things. Not all the time, but part of the time that is the case. And, you know, the Tigers do lose Christian uh, LeCaltour up front along with Greg Gilmore. Two big losses. But you do get back uh, Rashard Lawrence at one defensive end. He had 32 stops. And you get a transfer from Texas Tech and Braden uh, Pajeco at the other defensive end. And plenty of beef in the middle with Ed Alexander back 6'3", 339 pounds at the nose tackle. Got one of the best defensive players, I think, in the game. At linebacker in Devin White. You need him to make a tackle. He's going to do it. 133 tackles, including 13 and a half tackles for loss. You got him back at outside linebacker. And uh, Clavin Chason, who will compliment him also at linebacker. Arden Key, though, who went to my Oakland Raiders. You lose him. Well, the secondary, I think it's going to be a pretty healthy area. Last year, they were 21st in the country, only giving up 187 yards per game. You have a guy that definitely, if you want interceptions, you better be greedy. And that's what uh, the corner for LSU's first name is, greedy, as in Greedy Williams. Six interceptions in 2017, along with 38 tackles. And on the opposite side, it does look like you do have a replacement for uh, Dante Jackson, now departed, and Terrence Alexander, a grad transfer. And the safeties are going to be healthy in this area with John Battle, who decided to come back for his senior year, 61 stops last year. And Grant uh, Delpit, who I thought did a good job as a freshman starter, uh, with 60 tackles, including three and a half for loss and an interception, too. This schedule is brutal. If the Tigers win nine games off this schedule, at least nine, give Ed Argeron SEC Coach of the Year. The opener, yeah, you're going to have your hands full with the U. Play them in Jerry World on Sunday, September 2nd. Two weeks later, you go to Auburn. And then we haven't even gotten to October, which is filled with nothing but landmines. For the second straight year, you got to go to Florida. The next week, I give them hardly any chance to beat Georgia. Mississippi State killed them last year. And we haven't even mentioned Alabama. At least you get two weeks to prepare for them. But then again, Alabama gets two weeks to prepare for LSU. And then two of the final three games could be potential losses as well at Arkansas. And then you close out the year with Texas A&M. Fair or not, the expectations will be high for Orgeron. He needs to win the games they're supposed to and maybe pull off a couple of upsets to at least keep the critics in Baton Rouge at bay. Otherwise... Welcome to LSU football. That's my look at the Tigers. See you next time.